Hi, in this talk today I'd like to uh, discuss the, uh, the path of becoming a pro woodworker, a professional woodworker, and I'd hopefully inspire you to, uh, to take the leap and, uh, and to move from hobbyist to professional woodworker, become self-employed, run a self-directed business, relying on yourself. To start with, I'll define the word professional. It's a little misnomer for people because when they hear the word professional, a professional, they automatically assume doctor, lawyer, somebody that studied for several years at university level. But in the context of, uh, of a woodworking or a furniture maker, a professional woodworker is, uh, the term for it is a person engaged in a specified activity as one's main paid occupation rather than a pastime or hobby. You're actually working at uh, woodworking or furniture making as a profession. It doesn't necessarily mean you're a professional at it, especially early on. You develop that and you become a professional as you, uh, as you progress with the craft over the years and gain some expertise and experience. But you're automatically a professional if you're depending on uh, woodworking or furniture making as a, as a profession. I just wanted to get that out there. Part of uh, being a professional woodworker is to embrace competitiveness. And I have a good story or anecdote about this in my early years, how it, how it motivated me to create a much better product and how I uh, discovered that com competition in, the, uh, in woodworking and furniture making is actually a good thing. It actually forces you to improve uh, your offerings, be it uh, sculpture, wood turnings, furniture, which is what I create in my current role today. So I have some eye-opening advice from, uh, from embracing competition and I'll be sharing that very soon. Another uh, facet or point about uh, being a professional woodworker is to work with deadlines. Clients will demand a commission or order as soon as possible. This encourages you to develop uh, efficient processes and uh, workflow and develop new techniques and uh, basically become more efficient as a woodworker to uh, have a greater yield or output, and be it uh, small batches of furniture, uh, wood turnings. So you have a limited time in a day and you need to improve on your output. This develops automatically when you're in business, you need to become more efficient. You also need to develop a professional mindset. Competitiveness is ideal to raise the quality of your product. If you're giving your work away to your friends and family, the drive to excel is not there. We've all experienced this early on. We tend to give our work away to friends and family and not market the work. Of course, they're accepting of your work and there's very little critique or feedback because everybody's happy to get something for free. Only when you're in business is, uh, is when you really start to understand the quality of your product and how you should improve on a product. You get immediate feedback when you're actually selling the product to somebody and they're paying money for something, a commission, a piece on spec or wood turnings or sculpture. So you need to, uh, Embrace that uh, competitiveness is what I'm trying to say, and you only really get this through being in business. So I'm uh, Norman Pirillo, a uh, pro woodworker, professional woodworker. Woodworking has been my passion for over 30 years. I'm as stoked about woodworking today as when I began in 1994, and this is uh, very true actually. I can't wait to get up in the morning. I always have co constant uh, stream of ideas that I like to work on or new designs, furniture designs, new products, workshop en enhancements, uh, workflow enhancements. So from a, uh, from a hobbyist to a part-time woodworker to a full-time woodworker, I dealt into several aspects of woodworking. Initially uh, began as a box maker and then uh, delved into uh, wood sculpture and uh, ultimately became a, uh, a furniture maker, which is my current role, and I, I design and develop contemporary furniture. So the experience gained as a pro woodworker has been invaluable to me, and I hope to you too, if you uh, take the leap and go on your own. I hope to inspire you to become a pro woodworker in this talk. Hi, I'm Norm Perillo from Wood Skills, and I'd like to talk about a few woodworking books I've uh, written. My recent book is Quiet Woodworking in an Unquiet World. It talks about my movement to uh, hand tools. From High Tech to Low Tech, A Woodworker's Journey, which chronicles my journey from my former high tech career to my uh, current furniture making career. Along with that, I offer courses through woodskills.com. The courses range from a basic woodworking course right through to furniture design and a comprehensive design and making course. All books are available in both print and digital format. So I currently build furniture on spec at Perillo Design and share my woodworking and furniture making knowledge uh, through online courses, classes, books at WoodSkills and some of the, uh, some of my books are here. 
So you can see the paths uh, in the chart. You can see the paths I followed over a, a three decade period. From a small beginnings and a part-time business, I grew into other forms of woodworking, namely jewelry boxes, uh, even cigar humidors at that, in that period, wood art, wood sculpture, and finally a professional woodworker creating uh, contemporary furniture. So with my background in both woodworking and business, I enjoy sharing my experience on the topic of uh, the business of woodworking or being a pro or becoming a professional woodworker, pro woodworker. So I'll, I'll try to use that shorter label, the pro woodworker, but what it means is professional woodworker. So going pro as a woodworker will bring satisfaction, fulfillment and self-direction self to your life. Working at something you are passionate about is very rewarding. Yeah, I'll delve into that, that story, that anecdote that I'd like to share with people. Early on in my, uh, when I began, I, uh, I began to create boxes because I was limited in space in my early, early workshop. And I talk about that at length in uh, my earlier videos. On, uh, I have a specific video on uh, my box making journey. What happened is I uh, began to create boxes and uh, I knew very little about joinery at the time. Although I did study some cabinet making, I, boxes were, uh, were foreign to me. I began to scale my work down to boxes and I thought I would market the boxes because I just created so many boxes I need to do something with them. So I joined a, uh, a small crafts guild and they had uh, shows, craft shows, and I joined, uh, I enlisted in, uh, in a show and I brought my uh, a good collection of my boxes along and I set up a booth and just across from me in one corner was another box maker. He had been a long time uh, member of the same guild. So I noticed over a period of two or three days, people would walk around, they'd look at my boxes and look at his boxes and usually purchase his boxes. So I made very few sales, but he made quite a few sales. And I was intrigued by why people wouldn't purchase my product. So I went over and uh, actually just talked to him briefly and uh, complimented him on the quality of his box. And he said he would come over and uh, when he had some free time, and have a look at my uh, my boxes and uh, he's curious, he's also just as curious about what I have. So he came over and uh, we talked about it briefly, had a look and he, he noticed that the hardware I used, the hinges weren't up to par and the quality of the actual box wasn't quite there. So he was uh, not very complimentary of my work essentially. So I was taken aback by this and uh, I was so put off by the, uh, the lack of compliments that I actually asked him for advice. And he said to, uh, he, gave me, he gave me particular advice and he asked me if I would, uh, they have a critique night at the, uh, at the guild and you could uh, improve your boxes performing these, these steps and then uh, bring your box in a newer version of your box and we can critique it. And he's actually one of the people on the panel that actually critiques. So I did that. I tried to improve the box. I brought it in. It was much, much better than that initial box, but it still had some flaws. Went back to the drawing board, recreated the box. Eventually it was very, very acceptable and uh, they were fairly impressed with what I had done. And then I, I continued to market those boxes and a little more, with a little more complexity and I began to get, become successful. And this was at the cusp of the internet, so everything worked out and I was able to market on the internet also. Short story, <clears throat> without going into too much, uh, delving into too much detail, the complexity of my boxes increased over a period of uh, one to two to three years. And I, I began to offer very large, uh, high quality jewelry boxes. And I was marketing them throughout North America and internationally for a very good uh, price. It was a fairly lucrative business for a number of years until I began to tire of it and switch to uh, furniture making. And that's another story for another day. But that's the story and that's how critical it is to, uh, to embrace competitiveness. It, it improves you as a woodworker. At first, you're, you can be shocked and dismayed by the, by the fact that somebody else's product is so much better than yours. But you embrace this, uh, this critique or, of your work and then uh, pushes you to create a much better product. And, uh, Obviously, it worked for me, and I can't stress this enough in, uh, in your work. So don't be dismayed by uh, competition. Initially, there are people out there that have been doing this for much longer, as that other box maker I referred to. Uh, embrace that and uh, develop your skills to be able to compete with that person. And that's, that's the story. So becoming a pro woodworker will force you to learn other aspects of a business. Uh, you learn marketing, conversing with clients, Acquiring clients, 
managing a business. If it doesn't work out, these same skills can be applied to future businesses and endeavors. You'll be able to apply this uh, if the time wasn't right for you to have started a business or become a professional woodworker and you need to take a step back. You can always restart this and the skills you've developed you can carry forward to your next business. So acquiring and completing a commission is a rewarding process. You challenge yourself to uh, learn new techniques and develop new skills through a commission or new products. And as I've embraced this, uh, I usually uh, try to add an element or learn a new technique in every commission I, uh, I accept or I take on. And this uh, develops me as a uh, woodworker and furniture maker. And it also challenges me and it, I get some enjoyment out of the commission rather than just recreating the same piece over and over. Something to keep in mind. So working at something you enjoy brings success and a rewarding career. A business experiences ups and downs and businesses are typically cyclical. Uh, woodworking is a year-round business, however, and only a poor economy will drag it down. I haven't seen any uh, drop in sales or commissions over the years, aside from a recessionary period in the, uh, the late 2000s, but that's, that affected most businesses regardless. So you need to be prepared for that sort of thing. Although woodworking, again, is a year-round business, so it's not a seasonal business. So if a career change is on your mind, uh, take your woodworking skills and uh, become a professional, turn uh, pro woodworker. It is a once in a lifetime opportunity uh, to reinvent yourself and uh, we've all heard about people reinventing themselves and it's very common nowadays to reinvent yourself. I've done this uh, two or three times in my life and uh, my ultimate reinvention was as a, uh, a woodworker, furniture maker over a long period of time and I'm very content with it because it embraces my creativity and I'm able to create furniture, market the furniture, so I have to develop several skills just to conduct a, uh, a furniture making business and uh, my uh, other role as a woodworking educator. So going on your own as a professional woodworker is performed hundreds of times a week throughout North America. The folks I've talked to uh, over my uh, three decades of uh, experience that turned pro and started a woodworking business uh, never looked back. They've all, they're all content with what they've done and the experience they've gained is very invaluable to them just as it is to me and they can apply it to other facets or other uh, components of their life. So before we continue I'd like to uh, show you the type of work my contemporary furniture I create today and I don't have enough time or room in this uh, in this uh, video to, to show you all the work but this these are scale models or maquettes of uh, the type of work I create, the cabinets. These are some earlier scale cabinets. They're all uh, fifth or sixth scale, if I'm not mistaken. This is quarter scale and this is probably up to uh, a fifth scale. And this is, uh, so these are, uh, these first two are not functional. They're just for a client to better visualize what the cabinet will look like on stand. And this is uh, completely functional, this one. This is my, one of my more recent ones. The drawers actually work and they function as drawers. So I enjoy doing this also, and this actually is the best visualization. So I, I did this because I was going to launch a series of these cabinets with that unique stand that I developed. So it was worthwhile for me to create a, a, an exceptional scale model of it, so I can demo show it. And it's for the same for this one, it's an earlier version of a popular cabinet of mine with contrasting woods and the drawers also operate. So it's fun to actually create this, and you, know, you typically just use offcuts, and it takes me about a day to create each one. So I just thought I'd share that. The, uh, so I turned pro about 15 years ago after uh, working part-time at, at uh, woodworking. So I began as a part-time woodworker, a box maker early on, and then uh, eventually became full-time uh, pro woodworker. So watching my, uh, my, my, my former high-tech career, drastically change over the years. It was time for me to move on and take the leap. I went through several stages of uh, obsolescence in hardware and software and I realized that it's very difficult to keep up with anything in high tech. Everything's evolving constantly. I wanted a more static uh, vocation. I began by studying uh, cabinet making early on in the 1980s and uh, I was exposed to uh, cabinet making early on. And through that cabinet making, I realized that woodworking really hasn't, hasn't changed much in uh, decades or even centuries, especially if you're working with hand tools, which I do today. So this it was, uh, it was a complete uh, 180 degrees from my, my former high-tech role. 
and that's what drew me to woodworking and eventually furniture making and that's why I took the leap and that's something to consider because woodworking unless you're full on into automation and CNC you can actually create everything with uh, using hand tools today you can see a whole selection of hand tools be behind me you don't need all these tools but everything I create today is a large majority of it is performed with hand tools so when you turn pro in woodworking you see what you've created at the end of the day your output is uh, tangible and it's measured by quantity and quality of your work you're able to actually see what you uh, you completed for example when I completed one of these scale models I was uh, very satisfied at the end of the day as that I had completed this I had something in my hand to show unlike in my former career of uh, software and software development where just coding is essentially so there's really nothing to show and I have a creative streak in me so I'm a basically uh, a maker uh, a creator and I need to uh, I need to satisfy that urge to create some people don't have that some people you know they're fairly well content with uh, just developing uh, code or software or other endeavors in life so we've all heard the uh, expression time is money and as a woodworking pro you automatically develop techniques and uh, workflow improvements to increase your productivity because time is money. It's a, it's a good expression actually because in, when you're in business you need to uh, maximize your output, your yield in a limited amount of time so you develop all these efficient processes. Modify your workflow to increase the yield or increase your productivity. As a pro, you are motivated and encouraged to improve your woodworking skills and techniques to create higher quality work. So to successfully compete, a quality product needs an advantage over another uh, competitor's or another woodworker's uh, product. And we discussed that earlier. And that's what kept driving me to, uh, to, to better my, uh, to improve on my products, knowing that I've always looked at competitors' products and I wanted my product to be either at par to the better the more the more successful competitors or to improve on what they've done and this is something you'll find yourself doing as a pro woodworker all the time when you bid on something or even a commission or a, or a spec piece you'll have to uh, have something that's appealing to clients and something that's a little better and what they can get somewhere else so with time you take on more complex and larger scale orders and commissions and it's a natural uh, evolution of a woodworking business and my the complexity of work I've taken on has increased over time as I develop my my uh, my skills and my techniques and uh, as I mentioned earlier I like to introduce a new element into every commission and challenge myself especially if I haven't done it before and then I can add it to my repertoire of, uh, of techniques and skills and uh, use that in the next uh, commission and add another technique or and develop another skill with uh, with that com commission. So if you think of it in a different terms, the client's actually paying you to learn how to do something, as long as you do it well, of course, and you maintain the quality. So turning pro, pro woodworker, will provide you the freedom to make your own business decisions, set your own direction, decide and accept work you choose to take on. You become self-reliant. And uh, deciding and accepting work you choose to take on is this. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that you determine the work you'd like to take on, the amount of the, uh, the commissions, how large a commission, how many commissions over a period of a year, for example. So although initially overwhelming, learning uh, multiple aspects of running a business will stabilize over time. Your focus will then shift to your product over time. So initially you're, uh, you're guaranteed to be overwhelmed with everything about running a business, developing a business, acquiring clients, marketing your, uh, your product, marketing yourself. And then uh, eventually this settles down and your focus does shift to your actual product. Once you have a, a clientele or your marketing has succeeded in uh, acquiring clients. So if you get little to no satisfaction from your day job, investigate the idea of becoming a professional woodworker, pro woodworker. I experienced downsizing and loss of employment three times in my life. I uh, bounced back every time and eventually became a pro woodworker creating uh, custom uh, contemporary furniture as I've just shown you. Downsizing is fairly common today. Loss of employment is uh, even more common. This was four and, uh, decades ago when people had guaranteed jobs and uh, unionized jobs, but that's sort of gone away. So we're at the mercy of employers and the industries that come and go. I realized this early on and I decided to take my uh, develop my own path 
become self, self-reliant and decide for myself or to become a, uh, a professional woodworker. And uh, although it was a, initially it was a little bit of a struggle financially and was quite a quite a drop in income, I eventually overcame that and the, uh, I, the income stabilized. Although it's never been at the level of uh, my former career, the income of my former career, but I've also uh, reduced my expenses because of it. And of course, I've had to purchase uh, a whole complement of tools, and machines, and uh, all the other expenses associated with the business. So. Uh, it does work. The formula works, is what I'm saying. So the experience uh, of becoming self-reliant and becoming a pro woodworker motivated me to earn my living enough through woodworking to rely on myself. Going pro and being self-sufficient is a life lesson you carry with you throughout your life. Like I said if the, uh, earlier, if, if you've uh, done the business for yourself as a professional woodworker and it doesn't work out, doesn't pan out, you can always return to your former career attempt this again at a later date, but you'll have gained some skills in the process that you can apply. And you'll understand better what you need to to learn to run your own business or to become a professional woodworker and uh, be self-reliant and be self-employed. So it's, the skills are uh, invaluable to you. Guaranteed secure jobs are a thing of the past. I think uh, at this point we're all aware of this. You can dictate your annual income by going pro. You decide how much work you want to take on. So a little more uh, delving into what I was just saying. You can actually determine the size of commission, the amount of commissions you take on over a period of a year and uh, gauge the income you need. So if you're still learning, if you're still in the early stages of being a pro woodworker, you could uh, work with fewer commissions initially. And then as you develop your uh, your uh, workflow and your productivity improves. You can take on more commissions or more complex commissions as long as the income's there and you're, uh, you're able to uh, sustain yourself and your family. So as a professional woodworker, you will need to consider other aspects in your business. It is more than just woodworking. Other aspects include uh, client interaction, accounting, inventory control, equipment and tool maintenance, purchasing, marketing, acquiring clients, advertising and delivery of product, delivery of furniture. So this is necessary for your business to survive and thrive. You need to understand how to be able to do this and possibly get help at some point or uh, find a mentor that's already in business and learn from them. So becoming a pro woodworker is very rewarding. The key to being successful is having confidence in yourself. Being confident will move you forward. I've experienced the confidence and when you, uh, early on when you begin, you're, quite, you're not quite sure of your product, if it's going to be accepted in the marketplace, but once you, uh, once it is accepted and you're creating a quality product, your confidence will increase because of your content with what you're creating, quality is there, and you're able to utilize all your skills and develop more skills. So that formula works also. Initially, you need to remove the fear and insecurity of going pro. The faith in yourself and your capabilities will offset any setbacks. There will be setbacks in any in your business, in any business. Things don't go right. The commission didn't work out. You lost a lot of time. You, uh, you sacrificed a lot of time. You lost a lot of time. You've lost all the uh, materials that have gone into the commission. Possibly it didn't work out. Customer is not going, not accepting the commission. So you learn from that experience. I've been there once or twice, and uh, initially it's not a good feeling, but you just have to uh, take it in stride and move on, go forward. 90 or 100 percent of the time, things will work out, and you'll have the odd situation where it doesn't work out. There's no getting around that. So you might experience doubt from uh, people that surround you, doubt about your decision to going of going pro or becoming a professional woodworker. People will go on about how difficult it is to succeed at your own business, how cyclical it is, and uh, they'll also talk about keeping it as a hobby. Because there's a widespread uh, rumor or fiction going around that once you convert your hobby to a business, the enthusiasm disappears. This could not be further from the truth. In my case, I developed an even greater enthusiasm because I I was able to challenge myself, create a better product, and actually survive from my business and market myself. So if we look at it in different terms, I'm actually at a job, but I'm self-employed. I'm my own employer. And the same for you. 
So once you're creating your own product, you're self-employed, self-direction, you have all sorts of freedom to embrace, but you will be successful. So my advice to you is that basically disregard this bad advice and go with your gut. If you feel the time is right, become the pro woodworker. Go forward, experience it. If it doesn't work out, you can always go back. Just make sure you've uh, set some money aside to be able to cushion any uh, any disparities in income uh, during the period that you're establishing yourself as a professional woodworker and self being self-employed. So I did experience doubt at the beginning of my first woodworking business and there's no getting around this. You will have doubts and uh, trepidation about going into business for yourself. So I had many questions at the time and every little step was an adventure of its own. So I, got, I saw this as a, as a large adventure. It was exciting and I learned so much along the way. All the aspects of running a business, marketing yourself, even starting the business or uh, the legal uh, aspects of starting a business. The advice I'd like to give you is to develop a business plan, find somebody that can help you with a business plan or uh, take a course on developing a business plan and follow the business plan. I emphasize this. A business plan is a roadmap for your woodworking business. A business plan will keep you from deviating to unproductive uh, business directions. In other words, you uh, drill down to the niche you'd like to uh, develop products for or furniture for. In my case, it's contemporary furniture, Scandinavian-based contemporary furniture, and then work within that niche. I know at the very beginning you're you're open to uh, all sorts of work because you need the income, and you can do this for a while. But always keep in mind to focus on eventually focus on your niche because that's how you uh, will be able to market yourself as an expert in that particular niche of creating a high-quality product. And that's what the business plan does. It keeps you from deviating and you just become a general woodworker, you know, repairing furniture, creating uh, birdhouses, uh, cutting boards, charcuterie boards. So it's important to, uh, to focus on what you really like, the niche you, you really like to target. So I knew early on I, I wanted to be a furniture maker and that's where I uh, strive to work towards. Although I did take on some unusual project commissions or projects uh, early on just to, to be able to uh, support myself with, with some income. So if you're unsure whether you should go pro, within one year of my first woodworking business, I had absolutely no regrets. Instead, I would have regretted not going pro. And I've, uh, and all the people that I've talked to, the woodworkers that have gone, become professional woodworkers, they all echo the same uh, sentiment that becoming a professional woodworker has really drastically improved their lives as woodworkers, and they never look back. They look forward, and a lot of them have gone on to uh, create larger businesses. I've scaled my business down to uh, a one-person, a one-man uh, operation, and that's that's how I preferred. But I could have easily scaled it up and uh, employed people at early on in my box making days that I've talked about in my earlier videos on my box making journey. So I'd like to share some uh, takeaways from this talk on uh, going pro or becoming a professional woodworker. The first one is uh, not, to, not to get overwhelmed. Pace yourself and plan the hours in your day. Mix up woodworking tasks over different days to maintain the enthusiasm. If you're creating furniture, you could create certain components one day, create different components the next day. Just uh, introduce variety into your woodworking and I've had to and when I created small batches of furniture, I typically do this. I create components one day, work, focus on one aspect of the uh, of the small batch, and then do something different on the next day. And this also makes you more efficient because you're able to set up your uh, your tools, your workshop for that specific task on that day without having to change everything up. And uh, I do talk about uh, a workflow in a different video and. Uh, how I've embraced creating furniture in small batches for, for reasons of uh, efficiency. So becoming a pro involves multiple tasks. Explore the methods of simplifying and streamlining tasks. More, once you streamline tasks and simplify tasks, you're more likely to complete the tasks. This formula has worked for me over the years. I always find methods to uh, make my workflow more efficient. I'm always modifying my workshop introducing things. I've introduced a rolling cart at one point and that's helped me a lot and moving components around to different workstations or different workbenches just to be able to create my uh, my the components for small batches more efficiently. 
uh, improve on productivity, explore efficiencies, streamline products, drill down to the niche that you're uh, you really like to focus in on refining the niche is another word. Select products and furniture to sustain your business. Don't select products and uh, furniture that you're not content making, but try to find a happy medium of uh, the product you're content making. And it's also very marketable, it's popular. This, this will be the best compromise. So you're happy and clients are happy and there's a, there's a good market for your furniture or a wood product or whatever you create. So develop a management system and processes that work for you. Again, the efficiency, the uh, develop efficiency, work on the uh, your workflow and your productivity and lay out your machines and your workbenches and your tools to maximize efficiency. I've done this periodically over the years and I continue to do this. I've made some changes. Even what you see behind me is I've only recently set that all up just to have tools that I'm handy when I'm uh, working at this particular workstation. I have multiple workstations here. Next is to not neglect a healthy work-life balance. When you're self-employed, you tend to want to put in the extra hours every day. Try to limit your hours to maybe 8 to 10 hours a day. It's very easy to work 12 hours a day because you're self-employed. You're enjoying your work so much and you want to maximize your output for every day. But at in doing that, you're actually sacrificing the, uh, the healthy work-life balance. You're not spending time with your family or addressing other interests of yours. So it's important to uh, limit the time to a reasonable time, eight to 10 hours a day at your business and then uh, drop it and then start the next day. This will probably make you happier and then uh, maintain the enthusiasm of your business. Also reduce stress in the business. Allocate time for design and marketing, very critical to be able to design new products and I continually do that in my business. I teach a course on furniture design and I'm forever designing new furniture, new variations on existing designs of my furniture. So it's not necessary to complete everything in one day. Shift your tasks around and maximize your time. I talked about that earlier. Try to, uh, when you're working with batch, small batches, try to work on a few components one day and then shift to another set of components the next day and that creates variety in your work and maintains the enthusiasm. So as a professional woodworker, creativity will drive your product marketing and in turn successful marketing will drive your creativity. It's a feedback loop. I coined this expression, it's a feedback loop. And what it does is once you, once you uh, invoke your creativity and design products and you're able to market them and, and, and sell them and, and you're successful at selling them. This in turn will, uh, it's a successful marketing will in turn drive your creativity to continue to, to design and uh, create newer products, new uh, variations of your existing products or brand new products. So it's, uh, it's a continuum. <clears throat> That's what I've done over the years. I have a lot of unique designs to my own work and I've not only been a furniture maker, I also delved into tool making at one point. And I was actually making uh, hand planes, wooden hand planes at another point early on 25 years ago, 23, 24 years ago. Before that, a box maker for a period of uh, five years or so. All this to keep in mind. So I hope you've enjoyed this talk on uh, becoming a pro woodworker, becoming a professional woodworker. And uh, please subscribe to my channel and I will continue to provide uh, other uh, videos on, uh, on life as a professional woodworker, developing woodworking skills, developing woodworking techniques, improving your workflow. And I have quite a selection of videos already on these, some of these subjects or most of these subjects. So please subscribe and uh, don't forget to go to my uh, woodskills.com site and I have a good selection of books. Uh, this is my first book on uh, from high tech to low tech and a book on actually running a uh, woodworking business. Just start your own woodworking business. It's also offered as an online course. So again, thank you for watching and uh, enjoy your uh, possible career path as a professional woodworker.